Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sitting amongst the sahaba he said O oh my sahaba yushikal umamu an tada'a alaykum kama tada'a al-akalatu ila qas'atiha a time will come where how you one another you call yourselves call each other to a plate to a banquet how pe people who are consuming food they call one another people will call one another to consume this ummah in exactly the same way people will call one another against you similarly just as how you people call one another to a plate of food why did rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam give the example and the tashbih with food food is not something that can fight back food cannot offer any resistance food has not got a choice in what you eat what you leave if you half eat something the food cannot object if you choose to discard something the food cannot object if you want to swallow something in whole the food cannot object every word of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is absolutely amazing the balaghat and the wisdom and the rhetoric and the the the, the profoundness ulama mentioned he made tashbih with food he gave the example with food why because food cannot fight back when the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, they heard this. It was extremely difficult. It was extremely difficult. <clears throat> it was extremely difficult for ever them to perceive a condition like this fall in the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one of the sahaba radiallahu anhu majma'een they ask amin qillatin nahnu yawma idhin O Prophet of Allah will it be because we are few in number will it be because we are less will it be because our numbers have diminished and dwindled the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said bal antum yawma idhin kathir no my sahaba rather you will be massive in number but you will be as insignificant as the scum in the flood when floods come they bring dirt and filth with it you will be just like this you will have no izzat in society you will have no maqam in the sight of the people. You will have no prominence left in the worldly life. You will not be able to call respect like you once did. Badr, 313 Sahaba. Enemy of Makkah, the Quraysh, 1000. Victory belonged to this Ummah. The Battle of Uhud, 700 against 3000. Initially, Due to the mistake later on, Muslims suffered, but victory was initially for this Ummah. The Battle of Khandak, 3,000. Enemy, 24,000. Victory belonged to this Ummah. The Battle of Sham, enemy, Muslims, 1,000. Enemy of that time, 100,000. Victory still belonged to this Ummah. The Battle of Muta, and a Muslim, 3,000. Enemy, Byzantine, Qabail of Arab, 200,000. By the Qasam of Allah, victory still belonged to this Ummah. I mean, I mean, qillatin nahnu yawma idhin. Are we going to be less in number? Bal, antum, yawma idhin, kathir. You'll be in multitudes. You'll have many people. You'll be insignificant. You won't have no hasiyat in this world. You won't have no value left. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions the reason why. Allah ta'ala will take out from the hearts of your enemies any fear for you, any izzat and any khawf. Allah ta'ala will put in your hearts 
This thing of wahn. Sahaba were not used to this word. They said, Ya Rasulullah, what is wahn? Qila wa mal wahnu Ya Rasulullah. What is this word? We don't know what this word's, what word means. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, Oh my Sahaba, your downfall will not be because you have a lack of education. Your downfall is not because you will have a lack of worldly accolade. Your downfall is not because you have a lack of wealth. Your downfall is not because you don't have na access to natural resources. Your downfall is not because of the fact that you have no longer got big, big buildings, big, big businesses. No, my Sahaba, the cause for your downfall will be two. You will become too attached to this worldly life and you will be afraid to leave this worldly life and meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hubbud dunya wa karahiyatul maut. You will be too involved in the worldly life and you will fear the time of death and meeting Allah. What's happened to this ummah? We want to sit. We want to think of the reasons. Everyone will have their own theory. Everyone will come up with their own plan. How to make the ummah back to normal. If you do this, this will happen. If you do that, that will happen. Sahaba radiallahu anhu majma'een, they understood deen. They were the true heroes of Islam. They were the true people who were the flag bearers of Islam. They held the standard of La ilaha illallah and Muhammadur Rasulullah. We are no longer the Ummah of Izza. We are no longer the Ummah that has any prominence left in the world. Our downfall will not be a lack of education or weaponry or money or business. Yes, these things will be needed in their respective place. But the solution to the problems which we face and to the halat and conditions which we are faced with, Allah's qasam, Allah gave to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whether you live in Cardiff, whether you live in Bradford, whether you live in Birmingham, whether you live in America, whether you live in Canada, South America, Asia, Morocco, Saudi Arabia, North Pole, South Pole, East and West, by the Qasam of Allah, that Allah who controls my life in His hands. The solution to our problems and the solution to our halat and conditions by the Qasam of Allah, Allah has kept only and solely in the deen of Allah and nothing else.